This is the plaintiff, Jody Crowell. She says she hired the defendants to repair the ceiling in her house. It took them 35 days to make the repairs, and they did an atrocious job. She wants her money back and lost rent for her tenant and is suing for the $2,600 she's owed. These are the defendants, Gregory and Nancy Rigo. Nancy says she and the plaintiff have been friends for a very long time. And as the saying goes, you should never mix business and pleasure. Bottom line, they don't owe this woman all this money. And we'll prove it to the judge today. They're accused of wrecking the joint. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket. The plaintiff says that she hired the defendant to repair her ceiling, but 35 days later, it still wasn't complete. Now, the defendant says that you should never mix business and pleasure because they did a fine job for this former friend and owe nothing. It's the case of wrecking the joint, but bad. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Judy Crowell, you're suing your really good friends, Gregory and Nancy Rigo, for $2,600 because you're out all this money, according to you, because of shoddy workmanship that Gregory did. And I guess they were working on the project together. How long have you folks known each other? Since 2002. Okay. And were you good friends? We worked together. Okay, Is it <clears throat> so? but were you good friends? Yes. Okay, would you socialize together, too? Yes. Okay. So what is it you hired them to do? Because I wouldn't hire any of my friends to do anything because I wouldn't want them to stop being good friends. But what is it you hired them to do? I have a loft bedroom up oak spiral stairs. <clears throat> and the ceiling is a popcorn seal. And I wanted it taken down and replaced. Is that what Mr. Rigo does for a living? No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, what did you know him to do for a living? Um, he, I thought he welded at one time. Okay. So why? I know he fixed his own house up. Okay. So what made you think he'd be good at doing this? He did rooms over in their home. Okay. So the deal was that he would do this for how much money? Well, he wanted 1300 for labor and initially he wanted 400 for, for supplies. And then he wanted another 400 for supplies. How much did you pay him in total? I paid the 13 and plus the 8, 2100. Okay, do you have receipts? No, we, he, there were no receipts. Okay, Mr. Rigo, how much money did you accept from Ms. Crowell? Yes, 700, ma'am. 700? According to her, she paid you 800 for materials and then she paid you an additional 1300. No, I never saw the 1300, ma'am. Did you give her a receipt? Uh, no, no, did you I have didn't a think paperwork, that there. Did you have any paperwork like describing? how much you were going to charge and what you were going to do specifically for that money? Did you have any in, you know, any contract with her for the work you were going to do? No, uh, she, she didn't, she didn't, we didn't write up any contract or any paperwork, ma'am. Uh, she kind of stuck the money in my face and just asked me to do the job. Well, nothing was stopping you from grabbing a pen and a paper and writing down an, an understanding, right? You're not, a, you, this right, isn't your but, work, this isn't your area of expertise, is it? Well, I've done the work, I've done the work many a times. Taken popcorn yes. ceilings down and drywalled? Yes, I've done it in my own house. Okay, have you done it for other people, for hire? Uh, no. Okay. All right, Ms. Rigo, can I ask you a question? How close were you and Ms. Crowell? We were really close. We worked together, became good friends, hung out together, went to lunch, supper all the time. Wouldn't you yeah, say we that that is friends. exactly when you want a very clear understanding of how much money is going back and forth and what it's for? Isn't this precisely when we want something in writing so that there's no misunderstandings? She says she paid your husband $2,100. Well, we were good friends and we trusted each other. And I... I know that's the way she does business. She's hired other contractors in her house to do other things, and it's cash. Nothing's ever written. She never saves receipts. So it was. Well, um, how do you do business? It was a mistake. You, you guys did business the same exact way, and you're criticizing her, but that's how you did business. No, no, I'm not. I'm just saying that's the way she did it, and we don't go out and do this for anybody else. So and and no, let's talk you know, about why. Um, this is a kind of a loft that has a um, very slanted ceiling. And that's that was after it was fixed. 
and, and I can see the joint, the tape, and I can see something yeah. leaking through, like what's what there? Because that's not a very good drywall job. So It was never finished. I tried to go in and finish it. We had an agreement. She called me on a Friday, and I went up there. My daughter went with me. We looked at it, and we definitely decided it needed more work. It was not done. Well, why did I you decide him, that? I, what had your husband decided, that it was fine and good and dandy? No, no, no. He, no. he knew it needed to be fixed. Okay. But that loft was a very difficult job. I went up there yeah, one maybe night you guys to look at it. Maybe you shouldn't have taken and, that job if it's, ab- if it's above your pay grade. But we were trying to help a friend. We were trying to help each other. Yeah, look at where but, this ended up. This is a very bad I idea. Know. Very bad idea. You're friends for 20-something years, however long you guys were friends and how many friends do you have that are 20 years in your life that know all your secrets and your pains and your joys and now instead of being friends that you've known each other for 20 years you're people who are getting sued and suing your friend that's who you are and you have and she has a crappy ceiling because frankly this is not a professional job but then you do business with friends in a way that "Eh, eh, eh, let's all have a swearing match about what it is we were doing I don't know why people say, well, she was my friend. I thought I could trust her. What do you mean? That is exactly the situation where I want something in writing so that there's no misunderstanding. Now I have a, a swearing match about how much money you gave him. Receipts show what you paid. So even if you didn't have a contract with him, you couldn't have receipts for the cash? Because now look at the position we're in, Ms. Crowell. The issue I had was how long will it take? Because I have a, a fellow I rent the room to for $200 a week, and he said, um, no more than four days, three to four days. And I said, good, because he's going to find somewhere else to live. And there was not going to be any problem with the ceiling. He said he could do that. He's done it in his own house. So he wanted $400 to start, which I gave him. And um, then it's, I'll say two weeks went by, and he said, I'm going to need 1300 for labor. So I said, I only have right now. Oh, were you I shocked? Go to like you let him buy supplies and you have no idea what he's going to charge you? No, I didn't. I didn't have any idea. I knew he was buying sheetrock and joint compound and sanding and that type of thing, but I didn't know what that cost. Did you ever get prices from from legitimate sh- sheetrock workers who do this for a living? Did you ever do that? No. Right. That no, would be a I helpful bit of information to know if you're getting yeah. this great bargain from your friend, right? Well, more so than the money, it was rolling on and on. And Nancy would call me and say, how did Greg do on the ceiling? And I said, Nancy, he keeps sanding and sanding over and over. And he never he never put up um, plastic over the bifold doors to get in that room. The, um, and so all that white sand saw that, you know, the, when he was sanding, it was all over the downstairs of my house. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's what it looked like every day. But all of that came downstairs. It was all over my house. Let me ask you a question. Uh, did a TV break? I broke it. How did that happen? When, Well, as you can see with those pictures, it's very tight in there. There's a lot of furniture. And every time you sanded something, mm-hmm. you had to move the furniture around. I mean, you can see it in one of the pictures that well, you I just know, had. I know, but why don't you just tell and her, listen, we, got, we have to move the furniture if you want us to do this work. Why don't you just do that? I moved it. Well, when I you moved it, you the broke furniture. the TV, right? Yes. Okay. When I moved the, the bureau, it dropped and I broke it. Okay. So um, she said, oh, don't worry about it. So I said, okay, no problem. He did not cover the TV and it got dusty. Mm-mm. And all she did was complain about the TV. She sent me pictures of the TV. He didn't cover anything, and I said, Look, did he? Nothing. He no, he nothing. did. Oh, what did, yes, you, what did you no, cover? I covered everything. I had all the plastic. Well, then why was there powder here, well, downstairs from the construction? Did you put a well, piece of vis- Did you put and- an adequately thick vis screen to cover the opening so that it wouldn't come downstairs? I, I did for a little bit, but it, no. it's, it's such a small space, Your Honor, that I no matter what I did, I had to uncover to, to move something, then cover it back up. It, I was constantly doing it. Or you that could all just move the furniture area. from the place. That's another option. I mean, there's things that could have been done, but you know, you, then don't take the job. If nothing, if nothing can get done, then don't take the job. But I, I, what I'd like to ask you about, Mr. Rigo, is this: talk to me about how this wall, lo- how this ceiling looks. I knew that I, I had built it up a little bit higher than what it was, so it needed mm-hmm. more sanding on that seam. Well, it's not just so, sanding; the seam is visible. Right. Why is the seam you're going visible? To see the, so you're going to see the seam, yeah. I don't want to see the seam. It just needed more sanding. Sanding won't take away the seam. 
No, no, it's not going to take away the seam. But well, uh, okay, the, the but whole thing typically is about, speaking, in a drywall job, you're not supposed to see the seam, right? Right. Yeah, it's supposed to be nice and nice and flat, nice and nice and level. So and how that's would what sanding resolve to. that? How would sanding? I'm looking at the seam all the way up and down. How would more sanding fix that? Uh, well, it, it's very hard to see because it's not a clear picture. It's but a it very did, clear a picture. A little more thin and then it needed one yeah, final yeah, it uh, coat. Ms. Rigo, you, got, you get into an agreement with Ms. Crowell that mm -hmm. you will be there on Sunday. Let's talk about the agreement you had on the phone and what you guys, what your plan okay. was. Go ahead. On Friday, we met and my daughter was with us. And I said, look, let me make this right. I will get all the equipment that I need. <coughs> Because my husband's a, a bigger guy, and that room is very difficult to move in with all the furniture, the angle of the ceiling. I said, let me come. I will sand it flush and get it ready to be painted. I'll clean everything up. When I walk out of that room, it will be clean and ready to be painted. I said, I can't do it tomorrow. I will do it Sunday. I will be here. And I just promise me, you won't let anybody come in here and do anything to it. Why would you? Why so would that, that even occur? To right. You? Because she, I knew she had a painter coming. Okay. And he was going to do some outside painting for her. And she was talking about having the room painted. If he paints it and he gets any paint on the ceiling, it's twice as much work to sand it all down and get no, ready. No, it's not. So it's by just having, work to get the paint yeah, off the will, ceiling. That's all. Can I ask you something, Ms. Crowell? Um, sure. Why wouldn't yes. you wait for Ms. Re if Ms. Rigo and you had a deal that she would be there on Sunday, and I know she got there at 9 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, why was somebody painting the walls? Because we were in our 35th day of sanding. Greg came up wait, almost Wait, I'm sorry. Every Hold day. on. Ms. Rigo, 35 days? <laughs> 35 days. No, I don't think it was it, that long. Okay, how long do you, Mr. Long. Mr. Rigo, how long do you think it was? Uh, I was there for approximately about uh, three weeks, three and a half weeks. Why would it take me. three and a half weeks to do a drywall job? Well, well because it, I had to wait until Friday to, to, to be there because I couldn't do the, I couldn't be there during the week, Your Honor. How often would you go there to work on it? Uh, every week, ma'am. How often? How many days a week did you go each of those weeks? Uh, two and a half days. And Ms. Crowell, according to you, how often was he there? He never came after five o'clock. The border I have in that room comes at six in the morning because he works a double shift at night. So I told them I, I only had it those, what they said, three to four days to do the job. I said, that will be fine because I'm going to ask I'm going to ask my tenant to go away for those three or four days if he could find another place. Or I pay for a hotel for him for those few days. And he said, absolutely no, no problem. Well, time's going on and going on. And it was Where's your tenant during day. all this time? I don't know where he went. Okay, but, but he was, was he paying rent? No. Okay. No, because it, it was 35 days. And during that Why time, are you suing was, for $1,000, the one month of lost rent while this work was going on? Yes. Ms. Crowell, why don't you tell me, do you have any proof of what the amounts were that you paid him? Or is all of your evidence just your withdrawals from a bank? How about any texts or emails between you two where you say, for the amount of money I paid, comma, $2,100, comma, I should get, do you have anything like that where... If you hadn't paid $2,100, they would have said so right after the text. Do you have anything like that? No, I asked, to, I wrote to her and said, I need a receipt because we need, Greg went and, and put the joint compound on way too thick. So every single day, that's all he did was sand, sand, sand on the days he came. But then he went and painted over the thick joint compound. That's why nobody could get it off. Um, so I wrote to her and said, now what was happening is Greg painted that joint compound to make it even more like cement. So could you please send me the receipt showing me the name of the paint and the color? And that way, maybe if I get a guy to paint the whole ceiling, it will blend in better. And she sent me that receipt and it shows he, he spent $58 on himself. On what? He bought lawn fertilizer. For twenty four dollars. Okay. Um, he bought coveralls for himself for twelve dollars. He bought ice breaker, ice cube, g bubble gum, for four dollars, and he bought more ceiling paint for fourteen dollars. Mr. and Mrs. Rigo, where are the receipts for the amount that was spent on the materials? 
We, I don't know where the receipts are. I don't right know now, where they are at the moment, man, but I think it's about 65 bucks with the paint. Yes, I did. She never asked for receipts. I don't care if so she asked for them. I want, I am it. asking you for them. You don't no, have I don't them, have even them. though everything blew up right at day 35. And so you know that this is going down a bad path. So let's talk about what happens on Sunday morning. You get there at nine o'clock in the morning, Ms. Rigo, and what do you see? I go up the stairs and I see him painting. And I just dropped my head down and said, she promised. I looked at the ceiling. He's got paint on the ceiling. I just, I was disgusted because now it was going to be more work. Why? Because he so got a drop of paint top. on the ceiling? That was going to be more work if he got no, a drop no, of paint? No, no, there was a lot more. Good. Did you take no, a photo of it so you could prove no. it to me? No. Okay, no, so what I did didn't. you do? You lost your mind I'm and you got this. really upset no, at her. No, no. Okay, you no, tell no, me what you said and did and then I'll ask her. Go ahead. Yep. I'm, I'm at the top of the, rail, the stairs. She's sitting on the couch below. And I looked down to her and I said, Jody, you said you were going to wait. And then she started screaming, wait, I can't wait. I couldn't wait anymore. And that's when we both lost it. Why don't you just make it right? Because Instead of having a fight with her. But why, why don't you just do your it job? Was last why don't you just, excuse me, let me rephrase it. Why don't you just fix your husband's job? If that's what you were there to do, what difference does it make if if there's green paint there? You could still fix a drywall job and then tell her, have your painter paint the ceiling. There's no excuse for walking off the job. At that point, you two end up in a fight, you storm off, and now you're not friends, right? So, but no, before you I, left, you you plotted no. down $500. No, not right before I left. That's the second time I came back. She was still screaming at me about the TV, took pictures of it. It's covered in dust. The TV, she told me, because I broke, don't worry about it. I was so upset when I left. I went, I bought her a TV. I came back. I left the TV and I left $500 on the table. Okay. So the initial and essential problem that I have with your case, Ms. Crowell, is your lack of evidence on how much money you paid him because you don't have a single receipt and then I have a swearing contest about how much it was. I don't trust Mr. Rigo's memory because he's saying it's 700 and his wife is saying it's 860. Mm -hmm. um, but if she admits to 860, that's the figure I'm gonna take. In the future, when you pay somebody cash, make sure you get a receipt so that you can prove how much you paid them. So, uh, mm -hmm. because just you withdrawing money from the bank doesn't prove you paid anybody anything. So we're starting with the figure 860. Then you're out for two weeks rent at $200 per week. So that's an additional $400 that I'm gonna order him to pay you because this job shouldn't take a month and shouldn't put you in that position where you're losing the rent for that long. Their job and the essential problem I have with your defense, Mr. and Mrs. Rigo, is that this is one of the worst drywall jobs I've ever seen in my life. You don't know what you're doing, at least not on this job, and you shouldn't have taken it on. You clearly do not know what you're doing. But worse than that, you show up at her house and you're mad she's painting walls because he splattered a little paint on the corner. So now, oh, I cannot work this way. You're like Picasso and you've been interrupted and you want to just fix the darn drywall like you said you would. So you had no reason getting upset, having a screaming match and storming off the job. And when you did that, you make that job worthless because someone else has to rip it down and do it over, okay? Mm -hmm. So. That's 1260 she's into you for, minus 500 that you paid her that day. The TV is awash with having broken the TV. And that leaves $760 that I find the defendants owe the plaintiff. Verdict for the plaintiff. Well, the plaintiff recovers $760. She wanted a lot more than that, $2,600. Uh, Ms. Ms. Rigo, bottom line here, what about this friendship? You've been friend for a long, you know, friends for a long, long time. Now is it totally over? You're not speaking to each other? No. It's over? No. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, it's over. It's over. Yeah, there's some things that when you say you, you just cross that bridge and you burn it. So, yeah. All right. Well, I think you're both at fault, really, quite frankly. And you should have had receipts. Ms. Crowell, you'd have gotten more money if you'd have kept receipts. But you're going to get right. $760. How about that? You okay with that? Well, not really, because I paid him a total of $2,100 plus the 1000 the I lost for my tenant. It was $3,100. Right. And they're denying that I gave him $1,300. And that's what's more upsetting than anything else. Now I have to find somebody who can really do the job rip that down and do it again because as she said it's a mess all right well that does it it'll wrap it up for the case and i guess wrap it up for a friendship
Harvey? Doug, I'm not saying you should never hire a friend to do work, but you got to be extra careful. And if the other person doesn't have the skill to do the job, my recommendation, go elsewhere and preserve the friendship. I took my expensive slacks to my cleaners and they are ruined by an ink stain on the pocket. They refused to pay for them because they claim a pen was in the pockets, but they should have noticed that before cleaning them. Can I sue? Can you sue for that? Well, this is America, so you know the answer to that. You yes, can you sue can for sue. anything at all times, anywhere. You can sue, but I, it, whether you're going to be successful is another matter. Every time you go to the cleaners and you drop off your clothes, they give you that little piece of paper, and that serves a couple of purposes. One is it's going to track your clothing items and make sure that your name and phone number are associated with those. The other is it's probably going to limit their liability or exclude their liability for these types of things right on the back of it. And the reality is pens and like matchbooks and things like that, they will ruin your clothes. Why is that their fault that you left a pen in your pants? How about you take the pen out of your pants? And the thing is they're handling hundreds or maybe thousands of items. Right, but they're supposed to check. I mean, it'd be nice if they did that. Right. It would be nice if I did that before I threw the laundry in, but I figured the guy who throws his pants in maybe should empty his pockets Uh before he throws his pants in for someone else to wash. Okay, all right. But look, even (laughs) even if they did, and let's say you're a really good customer and you know, you spend of a few hundred dollars a month or whatever it is at the dry cleaners, they may say, yeah, you know what? Maybe we should pay for that $100 sweater or whatever it is. They're not going to pay you the full amount. They're going to depreciate it like they would anything else. Right. Oh, those say, tickets uh, always uh, limit liability. Thing. They're pre-printed. Every that. cleaners uses right. the same several companies exactly. and they all say the same thing. They're going to limit their liability. Exactly. But on top of that, I don't even see how that's their fault. 